Welcome to live stream number 115. My name is Lars Christensen and um, happy Monday everyone. It is January, it's January 8th, 2018. Um, we are hitting a heat wave here in Western New York suddenly from minus 20 last week to now like 38 degrees outside. But today <laughs> we're gonna talk about Fusion 360 because that's what we do, right? I got three great questions and uh, you know how it is when some one person asked a question there was probably you know 40 other people who uh, kind of like thought about the same question so we're gonna attack today we're gonna talk about what does scaling really do or how does scaling really work then somebody with a sharp eye noticed that when you're switching in translating bodies and I'm gonna show you that on the screen that you get some more options when you select features, what is my preference? And then the last question was, one guy's asking, hey, what happened to my mess workspace? I can't get the, well, that's what we're gonna attack today. See where we got a bunch of people in here. Absolutely love it, you guys are the best. Hope you have a great start to, uh, to your week here. And um, enough of me yapping, let's get into uh, to Fusion. So, great question. How does scaling really work? Um, so let's go in here and I'm gonna think I'm gonna show you some, some pretty cool stuff. So scaling is right underneath the modify. Uh, you can scale uh, your components. This feature is used um, quite a bit if you are importing models. Somebody, sometimes when you're importing models, um, then you find that there's a scaling issue going on. But just to kind of like show how it works, let's start from the basics because you know, that's what I like. So let's start a sketch on this face here and S for our shortcut key. And let's get this center rectangle going. And we're gonna make a rectangle. No, let's make a square. 50 by 50. Just remember that, 50 by 50. Okay, so that is sitting right on uh, our flat plane right here. And let's extrude that Q. And uh, let's make that 50 also. So everything is, is 50, 50, 50. Okay. Now, um, we can turn the origin on. Maybe that makes it a little bit easier. So you can see the origin sitting right here in the, in the center there. Now, scaling means that we now go in and we are scaling the object bigger or smaller. So I'm going to select scaling. And you will see that you get a couple of different um, options over here. First off, it's asking for entities. Um, notice that it doesn't ask for bodies because this actually also works for something like sketch geometry. But just for the fun of it, uh, let's just select um, this body right here. Now, when I select this body, you will see that a point was selected also. And actually, you can see that it has that arrow right there. So it does that automatically depending on what you're closest to. Actually, if I hover over it, you see if I hold my arrow right there, how I get a point, or if I go over there. So just be aware of that the point, whatever, it will select the, the closest vertex or intersection or whatever you, you wanna call it. Uh, but of course, you can click over here and you can kinda like cancel it out, and now you could select your own vertice. So we could go back and select this one or any of these here. The matter of the fact, um, this selection point can be um, a lot of different things. Um, it could actually be a completely other object we had in here. Um, we could go in here and we could select uh, the origin uh, in here. Um, talk about the origin, you could actually also, if you go to the construction, uh, in here, you can create vertex um, in here. It could be that too. So be aware of that this point here, um, you could sketch something that you want to use uh, as that. But let's just select the origin for a moment here because we all kind of like know where that is located. When we've done that, um, in here, you can choose between doing it uniform or doing it non-uniform. I'll show you both. Uniform just means uniform, but from that point, 
Um, so if I go in now and I make it twice as big, so if I want to make this cube 50 by 50, 100 by 100, I go in and I change this to two times bigger, okay? And you can see that happens, but notice that it's uniform from, from the, the origin. It, it, it used that as a space point and went outwards from that point. Um, if I go down and I click, well, let's just hit OK to that, and I click on the sketch, you will see that that's where that uh, sketch is sitting right there. And it kind of like went from, from that point. Now, let's try something fun. Let's try to go back into our original. Um, now, so one of the things I just got to say quick, look how the sketch didn't trans, the sketch didn't become bigger because, and this is important, right? To remember that this down here happens in history. We've talked about a lot about that lately, uh, that this follows the order. So at this point, it's still 50-50. Then the scaling happens. Okay, so when I click down here on the sketch, when I click on this sketch, this sketch have not changed at this point where the sketch is sitting. At that point, it's still 5550. Now let's try something. Uh, let's just delete this sketch or this scaling for a second. Let's go back into our previous um, extrusion, right? Click and hit edit. And we did that extrusion up from, from the center point, right? Or from the plane there. What happens if we go and we change the direction to symmetrical and place the plane right in the center? Right? So now it, we just change the direction. So now it's coming from here going both sides versus just sitting there going in one direction. Now if we go back in and we do the scale, and again we can select uh, the box here. Now it places the arrow right there but I want to get it back to the origin. And I actually, you can see you can click it right here, but if you want to be 100% sure, you go over here to, to the left. If we go over and do the same thing again, you will see that again, it's scaling uniform from that point. So now this sketch is sitting right inside of, of the center there, okay? Another way to show this is maybe going back into our scaling and let's select this corner right here and scale two from that. Now, when I click on the sketch, you will see that it's, it, it, it scales from whatever that point is uniformly from that point, I guess is my, uh, is my best interpretation of that, okay? Now, uh, so that's uniform. I hope this makes sense. What does non-uniform mean? Well, let's click on it. When we click non-uniform, we are switching the scaling. Now, it still needs a point to go from the scaling. But instead of going uniform, it's now all set to 1, 1, 1, 1 in the X, Y, and Z. Look at the view cube up here. What means that I can now change this. So if I go in this direction here, in the X direction, I am scaling only the X distance out that direction. If I switch over and click on the Z direction, I'm sketching that way. I'm literally making a plate. Uh, I'm scaling in the direction of the arrows. So it gives you uh, an option to kind of like control um, how you want um, this scaling to kind of uh, operate. Huh. So, you know, I hope that this at least kind of like give you an idea of going in and playing around with it. Remember that when you're in uniform, whatever, whatever point you're selecting, um, that is where it's going to scale from. And I can see where it could be a little bit confusing. If you're selecting an entity here um, and you don't get a, a point and you don't know that you got by mistake selected a corner point and you start scaling this, I can see how that can be a little bit confusing in what, uh, what direction it, um, it goes in. Okay, so 
just to summarize that, remember that the scaling don't happen until in the area where it's created uh, right here. Now you could, you know, many times, depending on what you're scaling around, you could move it behind a feature uh, and then the scaling will, will happen um, after, after that. All right. That was what I wanted to show about the, the, the kind of the scaling here. Uh, at least I hope that this kind of give you an idea uh, about, you know, going into this feature and, and, and play around with it if you ever get uh, a feature in there. Now, the other question I got, um, I think is one of these awesome, awesome ones. Um, and that is in regards to um, the patterning uh, feature oh, on the create patterning rectangular patterning. So if we go in here and we select a rectangular patterning, it defaults to faces. Um, but somebody noticed that I like to use features because then I can just select the feature down here in the feature tree. But when you select this to features, you suddenly get a compute option adjust identical or optimized what the heck does that mean and i think that that's a that's a great uh question so first of all let me just before i i, I change this it's set to adjust by default uh when we're pattering something that means that we are kind of like creating well we're not creating copies per se um kind of but we're using a feature we can use this for many different things for cuts uh, like if you want to create, you know, different shapes and things like that. But basically, and now you're seeing something we're going to talk about here in a second. Basically, we are copying uh, the different um, instances here. So because I have the scaling on, let me just delete that for a second. So we have three different um, instances here. Now, let's talk a little bit about uh, the, the different options you get under uh, adjust, identical, and and optimized um and and by the way i should say that um normally i prefer if if you got to do something to the original part first like putting fillets on it drill holes and things like that get all that done first before you start patterning if you start patterning now and then you go back to the source and you start creating all kinds of features you can run into a few small issues with that because the way that this just a software calculate uh, things out. So make it a habit of making your your uh, translate at the end. Okay, me yapping away here. Uh, I'm just gonna delete this and uh, let me also just go back to where we were before with this extrusion and just make it one side of going up. Okay, now I'm gonna create another body here to demonstrate this. So I'm gonna go into the front view and I'm just gonna hit line, and I'm just gonna sketch a, uh, a line here. And this is absolutely not important, what this is. And see how I got a little sliver right there? That was kinda silly. Okay, and uh, this one is not even parallel or anything. Bad modeling, I'm not even, okay, I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's just extrude it. And uh, I'm gonna extrude that symmetrical just so I make sure that it gets a little bit bigger than our cube down here. Okay, so um, three different options when you are doing a, uh, a patterning. Create patterning, rectangular patterns, and I have it on feature, right? So my feature is gonna be that first cube we created. We have a direction and that's gonna give us uh, a, a number of instances. You can control all that, distance, extent, spacing, whatever you prefer. Down here, you have three different options. Okay, I give it to you in, uh, in the three different ways. Um, let's go in and change, let's just cancel out of this. Let's go in and change this, I'm skipping around a little bit. Let's change this extrusion here. Oh, can't do that because I want to extrude up to that one. Well, my point about moving things around, what if I move this cube till after this is created? Aha, uh -huh. now right click edit. I just left and uh, dragged and say, I want to extrude this up to this object. So extruding this cube, I move the cube 
up in front of this part and I just say up to object as my distance. Okay, so now we got this one here. Now, let's go into pattern, rectangular pattern. Let's make sure we have features. Let's select that cube that is now extruded up to there. I guess it's not a cube anymore. Directions, and let's make those three of those. Okay. So we got adjust, we got identical, and we got optimized. Now, I'm going to take it in reverse. Optimized is generally good if you are going to do a ton of patterns. So I know a lot of people are many times trying to uh, to do like some kind of like a mesh or something like that. And I normally, I would consider, um, you know, as soon as you start patterning over, I will say 25 or something, then you start talking about, you know, what I would call a big pattern. You gotta remember, um, you gotta remember the way Fusion, Fusion 360 is a mechanical CAD software. So it's trying to calculate and solve everything constantly. This is not paint, right? Like when you're doing a pattern like this, the software is still constantly looking back to make sure nothing changed and everything's precise and things like that. Um, so as soon as you get over like 25 patterns, I just think that, that you, start, you just got to be aware of that it's going to take some time to calculate that. And we're going to talk about that. I think it's tomorrow. We're going to do some pattern where we're going to hit some high numbers and you're going to see the software uh, is going to calculate. So anything over 25, I would definitely use optimized. Um, it's just the way the software is calculated in the background. Now, identical. What does that mean? Well, if we hit OK to this, it's identical, right? It, it's This one, these two are identical to this one. Now, but notice what happens if I go in and I say adjust. Then when I have adjust, then it sees that I extruded this one up to this surface and the two other one will do that also. Okay, so let me just go back through those again. It's in when, only when you have feature selected uh, as your patterning type, you're getting uh, this compute option. So optimized, if you are doing a lot, uh, then you definitely want to use optimized. Uh, identical means, well, it's just taking that first one and it's just making them identical. Looking from the side view, they're all identical. But if we do that just, it's actually smart enough to know that these should actually probably go up to, to our, our cross here. So that's just kind of like important to know. And I can tell you that this adjust feature here uh, probably would really, the computer have to work really hard if you started to do that with a lot of instances, then you might want to try to think differently. Okay, man, um, that was two. So the scaling and then the patterning, let's just talk about the mesh. So I got a good question uh, over the weekend. Um, I go in and I click on my drop down and I don't see a mesh. And I thought I had a mesh. And um, then go to preferences, preferences, click your name, preferences, preview, Oh, it's just because I don't have these different options turned on. So click Mesh and Fusion 360 Preview. We would like um, some options here. Sign me up for that. Hit Apply. Hit OK. And, whoops. And uh, still no Mesh. I just turned Mesh on. Why don't I see a Mesh workspace? <laughs> I mean, if you didn't know this, I don't know how you how you would ever know it. You need to have a mesh file in your workspace uh, to be able to uh, to see the mesh drop down. Hmm. Who would have thought, huh? So as soon as we're opening up a mesh file, this STL file, then we now get the mesh uh, dialog here. By the way, um, it's been a while since we talked about meshing. Uh, this STL file, I got this one the other day uh, with a quick question on how do I modify the thickness of this plate here? 
Um, this is from a download site uh, called Thingiverse, Thingiverse, uh, where you can download STL models. Um, and that is Fridays, Thursdays, Thursdays live stream. So uh, we're gonna talk about that Thursday. We're gonna work a little bit with STL files. So for any of you guys who does 3D printing, um, then you, um, you you get that. Uh, I just see quickly here that Woodcrafts asked a question. What's the difference between extrude and press pull? Talked about that before in the live stream, but I can't help myself. Whoops. Um, because I think that that is an excellent question. And I haven't even hit a half an hour yet. That's gotta be the first time. Let's say I make another cube here for Woodcraft. So let's click on make another 50 by 50. And then I always say press Q on your keyboard because that activate uh, the command called press pull. You will also see it's sitting right up here. It's called press pull, but there's also over here an extrude. So what's the difference between extrude and press pull? Well, notice this, we're in the sketch environment and I'm gonna hit Q or press up here, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna hit Q because I like shortcuts. I'm gonna hit Q and that activates the press pull command. Now, when I click on this Woodcraft, look what it says now, extrude. And look over here, it says extrude. So the press pull is not one command. It's many commands because um, if I just pull this up, this is just an extrude right now. Okay, so that was really just kind of like a teaser. Why did I use press pull when I could just have it extrude? But if I hit Q again and I select this face, is it gonna be extrude? No, now it does an offset face with the Q command, okay? So the Q can do different things. If I hit Q again and I select this edge, it automatically turns it into a fillet. So that's what the uh, Q or press pull does. It's kind of like, depending on what you're clicking, it will select different things. All right, guys. It's Monday. I hope that you had a great weekend, man. I did. Um, so that was it. A couple of tricks about the scaling. Be aware of that. The cool features inside of the translate. I think that that's pretty neat how it actually knows. It's got to extend those up. And uh, Mesh Workspace and then Mr. Woodcrafts, thank you for your question about the press pull. That is some, one thing that, um, you know, I don't blame anybody for being like, why does it do similar commands? But it does three things. That's it, guys. Um, I did post, if you subscribe to the channel, I did just post in the community tab, you should have gotten uh, the schedule for this week. But in case, you, I just did it like right before. So let me just get my old notepad here just make sure so today three good questions thank you for submitting those the email is down in um, in the description tomorrow we're going to talk about creating um cool patterns knurling we're going to talk a little bit about that and specifically for 3d parts but not or 3d printed parts not specifically but i just want to show a couple of tricks that i think if you do 3d printing i think you're gonna like that uh then wednesday we're gonna take that uh, wood cabinet we worked on last week and we're gonna add some parameters to it. Thursday, we're gonna do that STL file. I just showed up on the screen, modify that one. And then Friday, we're gonna machine some uh, STL files because I guess this week is all about STL files. All right, guys. I hope you have an awesome day. I hope you have an awesome week planned. I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to, uh, to join these live streams, just trying to add a little bit more value to you guys using Fusion 360. So with that, I am going to end uh, the broadcast. So if you're watching the recording, thank you so much. And jump into the live stream chat and just say hi to everybody. Take care, guys.